All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show with Shannon from BioMe. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. For people who don't know, what is your company? What is BioMe? So BioMe is a fiber-based gut health supplement company. Um, we are really kind of going after the big CPG brands in the space and redefining the importance of fiber as more than just a digestive health supplement, but really holistically for your wellness. And so of all the things you could be working on, and you're working on several, and so you're, yeah. you're a principal at Star Shop, Star Shop? Star Shop Ventures, yeah. Okay. And so yeah. what made you want to, one, start with that role and then jump into becoming a founder at Biome? So they kind of came in tandem. Mm -hmm. I guess the managing partner or general partner of Star Shop Ventures is Kurt Seidensticker. He is probably best known for his role as CEO and founder of Vital Proteins. I Worked with him there for many years through the acquisition that we did to Nestle Health Sciences. And so after he you know, left his role as CEO there, I had gone off and done some other things in the VC space, working on different brands and CPG. He approached me and was like, I miss being a founder, which I think most founders have this kind of epiphany in life. <laughs> They're like, yeah, absolutely. okay, I did the thing that I wanted to do, but now that I'm at the top of the mountain, I still have feel like there's more that I can do. Yeah, they want another mountain. That's how yes, that goes. they want another mountain. But yeah. he was like, but I don't want to, I mean, clawing your way to the top is so painstaking. And he was like, I don't <laughs> want to be in that position. I don't want to be okay. a CEO. So he, <laughs> so, so he said, you do it. So he's like, yeah, no. So he kind of actually reached out to some of the, we'll call ourselves heavy hitters of Vital Proteins and kind of the people that really came into the fold and helped build a brand to what it was before it was sold and was like, I have this idea, you know, I've started doing some, he had started doing investing in other CPG brands and, but really saw this as a bigger opportunity to strategically invest, but then also incubate new brands and put people at the helm of those brands or give those people a platform to incubate an idea without a lot of the, I guess, blood, sweat, and tears that comes with the financing and things like that. Like he's like, I trust that I know that you've done this for Vital. You've built this brand alongside me. I trust that, you know, there's something that you want to do in this space to fill some sort of white, white space category opportunity. Like I would be interested in having you incubate within the venture studios. And so in terms of the venture studio, so all the companies are similar in what way? Is it the same so, sort of demographic you're going after? What makes it the same? I wouldn't say demographic. I would say really just category. So okay. all of us who are in that space are CPG, specifically vitamin supplements. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. And so we do have one food brand. So food and beverage is like an offshoot, but I mean, we're very, very strategically focused in vitamins and supplements. I mean, we built, I mean, we've been, I'm trying to think of how long I've been working there almost since 2022. So almost September. So almost two years, we, in that time frame have also built our own manufacturing facility in Nashville. Oh, so wow. okay. we're vertically integrated at this point and can produce capsules, powders. So that's like really our core focus. And is, is it mostly acquisition based in the studio or is it like you're starting it from zero? Um, or a little bit of both? We've started all of them from zero. We are always circulating ideas around with opportunities to bring, to partially acquire or invest in and bring you know, people into our manufacturing facility in a co-man capacity. So the, the sky's the limit. I mean, we're very young. So we're still putting our feelers out there and trying to figure out how exactly we want to grow this. My first company, we, we had someone almost acquire us and it was the same thing. They had this like venture studio out of somewhere in the middle of the country and they were targeting a certain demo. And so it was basically like 18 to 24 year old men. And oh. our product just happened to suit that. And basically they had like 10 or 20 people in marketing that just crush social media. Like they yeah. had that pretty much dialed in. Yep. And so they, they looked at our brand as like, we know the demo, we know the buyer, we're just gonna go ahead and acquire companies that look and smell like the thing we know how to work towards. And then it was pretty smart actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think not on the, the demographic side, but really on the, we ran this playbook to great success with Vital and all of the players that are kind of sitting at the table now are come from that world and have either done it with Vital or done it with other brands. And so like, this is the, like what we know. And yeah, so we're kind of similar model. When it comes to what you saw on the market for, for Bio Me, mm -hmm. what did you see? 
What was the opportunity that was like, we should do this? So I'm a co-founder. So I have another founder that sits alongside me. She is kind of our inspiration founder. Her name's Chloe Malas. She works at the Today Show. What's an inspiration founder? So she has had ulcerative colitis for I think 17 years. She's in remission now, but one of the biggest culprits to her getting into remission was adding psyllium husk, which is a fiber, into her diet. And I, when I was at Vital, Kurt was very was very privy to this to this knowledge. I have been on this long gut health journey myself personally. I have had IBS since I was in middle school, and Vital Proteins was actually like one of the most incredible experiences I could ever have, not prof- not only professionally but personally too, because I grew up in the Midwest and I you know lived in Chicago and you know naturopathic or holistic approaches to remedying any issues you were experiencing just wasn't around, or at least not in the circles that I floated in. So when I was introduced to Vital, it like kind of opened this can of worms in a way, me really discovering how much of the your, the foods you eat and just like generally all of these different components in your life, how much they impact your gut health and how that can, you know, show up in a variety of ways. And for me, I realized, oh, I could like basically heal my gut and all the issues I've had for the vast majority of my life just through food, through supplements, through things that I'm just not getting enough of in my diet. So Chloe and I have known each other since Vital Proteins, and she came to the table with this idea. So I inspired her. Interesting. Okay. Because she was like, I just, when I was going through this with her ulcerative colitis, she's like, there's just not a lot of options out there for cleaner psyllium husk based products. I mean, her doctor was recommending she take Metamucil. And, you know, so when you look at like the category as a whole, it's these brands that have been around for 90 plus years and have very, I I doubt they've even changed their formula. If you look at the nutrition supplement facts panel, it's still riddled with a bunch of ingredients that are actually really counterproductive to what the product should be doing for your gut. So we talked about it and Kurt was like, I want to, you know, help. I want to essentially finance this or fund this idea and we can incubate it in Starshot. And this is kind of how it was like a snowball effect after that was then, you know, the Starshot, the platform of a venture studio plus the fund and kind of all these things happened pretty much in sync. And I like sat down with, she was prior the head of innovation at Vital Proteins. And I was like, we need to build a product roadmap that really makes sense though for the modern consumer because psyllium husk is not for everyone. It's a very finicky fiber. It gels when it sits too long. I mean, the benefits are insane. They're amazing. But, you know, modern consumers, especially in the supplements space, they want just easy, can add to anything. They don't want it to get in the way of their, you know, daily routines. So it was really about figuring out how do we almost create a new subcategory within an existing category that addresses what modern consumers are looking for, cleaner ingredients, you know, efficacious, like clinical research, and really almost like reinvigorate this category that's been around for a very long time. It just hasn't been touched and frankly has had some really shitty marketing behind it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that (laughs) seems like what you guys are solving. And so when it comes to the first product you guys were, were you always thinking about releasing several different SKUs or was it like, let's go with one, figure out what the hero product ends up becoming or did you guys know? So when I kind of concepted what our product lineup would look like, it was always starting with three different products. We definitely wanted one that was really addressing that Metamucil consumer or the person who might be familiar with psyllium husk is already taking it, but would prefer a cleaner option. So that was the fiber rescue product. Then the daily prebiotic fiber was the one that I just knew was gonna be our hero skew. It's unflavored, two clean ingredients, both have mounds of clinical studies and research behind them. So extremely efficacious and could just is really versatile. So that product is our daily prebiotic fiber. And I knew that I wanted that one because I knew that I wanted to capture those new consumers that may not be taking fiber as a, for their wellness or for their health or for even for gut health and get those new consumers in. So I kind of almost thought about it as like, who are the existing consumers in this space? What do we put out there that's gonna capture new consumers to this space and really attract them into this category? Because like I said, fiber at this point has been such a reactive, I would say, category or supplement or nutrient. People 
really only went to it because they were suffering from constipation. I mean, when I thought about how I grew up and when I was exposed to fiber, it was like fiber one bars and all the crap that my parents would, you know, stock the shelves with when they had constipation. And we wanted to really address a much larger audience. So that kind of, I guess, uh, helped us figure out. And when it comes to launching it, how is Chloe involved in that way? Is she the face? Like what's the, what's the piece you guys leverage her the most for? No, I mean, Chloe and I are very, we are very close and work in tandem on a lot of different things. Chloe is a very busy woman, so she's not involved in the day to day, but she is, you know, a really good core part of the story of the brand. I mean, she's essential to the story of the brand. We're kind of like co-captains in a way. So in some way, I, I, you can speak freely or candidly on this one. The question I always have is uh, I'm helping a friend right now land a pretty big celebrity, let's call mm-hmm. this human being. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to structuring how you do this mm-hmm. in terms of like what, because they're not going to be involved in the day to day. And so what advice would you give like an entrepreneur? And I know it depends on all the stuff. Yeah. And I've heard this go 40 different ways. I've never heard a good story. Yeah. That's the reality. And so when you think about this as a founder, as someone who's a veteran in the industry, how do you think about the right way to do it or what's the perfect way to do it? I mean, I'm always hesitant with any sort of creation of a brand with a celebrity face. I think that the staying power of that is very short. There are so many brands that celebrities put out there and so many brands that fail. So first and foremost, make sure you have like a real specific product market fit. And I mean, I just wouldn't lean on that celebrity as kind of being the way that you I guess, introduce the brand or really connect with consumers because it's just, it's, it feel it's very fleeting in today's world. Anyway, I also like, you know, I'm a marketer. So this is something that I always feel like should come much later in the life of a brand. If you want to bring a celebrity face in to really help boost awareness and really, you know, amplify the brand. Sure. If it makes sense, but leaning entirely on that, it's hard to keep up with it over time. Sure, you might get that initial buzz, but you know you want people to come to your brand not for a celebrity. You want them to come because they connect with it. It feels meaningful to them. It feels like it's offering something that they haven't seen before. And so you want like that deeper layer of connection. And so as far as partnership goes, I mean, sure, be thoughtful about how you can lean into the network and the connections, but make sure that you're also thinking about how does this brand exist without this person involved? Yeah. What it's like really about in some way. Yeah. Ultimately it's about the consumer. Totally. And so if you can make it about the consumer and keep that focus. I mean, I am a very massive consumer of TikTok now. Okay. Um, Never thought I would get here, but I am here. (laughs) What led Um, you? Because you had to be just because you had to understand it. Yeah. I remember when I like was really getting big in like 2020 and late 2019. And I was like, what the heck is this platform? I'm like, yeah, what, we, why are we even thinking about this? Cause I was at vital proteins at the time. I'm like, why are we even thinking about this as a social platform? This is ridiculous. Cause it was just when people were like singing and dancing and you know, obviously things evolve and that is the way that people want to consume content now. Yeah. They want to consume it in short clips of videos. They want to learn something. And I think just there's so much more to that platform than just singing and dancing as many of us who use it frequently now, you can really cater it to whatever your interests are and find a lot of really interesting content on there. The purpose of that that point was that attention is like so finite with consumers. Like, so a celebrity is, you know, it feels like a new celebrity is coming out with a product every day. Yeah, that's and true. And you're seeing it, you know, blasted on TikTok and it's like, you see it and for 24 hours and then you don't hear about it again. It's just, we keep moving so rapidly that it almost feels like you have to connect with consumers on such a different level now. And what level do you think that is? Like when you guys think about your marketing outreach, how do you, what do you focus on? My laser focus right now is education because I think that knowledge is power. But when you help people understand that something that they've been missing from their health routine or their diet or just, you know, the tools in their toolkit of life. When you help them understand that that's been missing and these are the reasons why that missing piece, you know, is going to be so helpful in all of these different areas of your life, like 
they're not going to forget that. I mean, I think there's a stat out there that 95% of Americans are deficient in fiber on a daily basis. So that means like that's pretty much all of us. And 50% of those people who are deficient are only even probably reaching about half of the amount of fiber they need in a day. And if you knew that fiber was the core nutrient to feed the good bacteria in your gut that leads to all of the, like your diversity of your microbiome and, you know, helps keep things balanced so that you're sleeping better, that you, your mental health is better, that, you know, your weight, you can help manage your weight better. I mean, wouldn't you be like, hmm, I should probably take more fiber. So that's really how you have the story around the why and really helping people understand the importance or the information that they may just not have known is, in my opinion, like the strongest. Give people a window on how do they consume it. So they buy the product. How much is it? How much is the product? How much is the product? So our daily prebiotic fiber is $35. It's 30 servings. So it's a month's worth. You get seven grams of fiber in each serving. So if you think about a female on an average day needing about 25 to 30 grams of fiber, that's getting you, you know, almost a quarter of the way there. And our Fiber Rescue, which is our psyllium husk-based product, is $30, 30 servings. It's flavored, it's lemonade, it's really delicious. And then we also have a symbiotic, which is a pre-pro and post-biotic capsule. And people just take a scoop, put it into what? The unflavored daily probiotic fiber, you can add it to smoothies, yogurt, coffee, you know, juice, whatever you're kind of consuming throughout the day. It's pretty easy to add that. I've, you know, baked with it, added it to salad dressings. It's pretty versatile. And then Fiber Rescue, you're, you're taking that straight with water. And where is the company today? Like, what have you learned so far after the short time on the market? We're, I mean, we've grown really quickly. Where is it? Where do people buy it? Amazon and our website. Okay. Yeah. So we're strictly online right now. Okay. That's smart. Yeah. I think it's really, this is kind of where the Vital Proteins experience comes into play is we really built that brand first online through brand awareness, through influencers, through media, through all of these things so that by the time we were ready to roll out in retail, we had pretty good brand awareness. Like we had a lot of people who were going into Whole Foods and asking for the product and the product wasn't on shelf. So that puts you in a better seat of negotiation when you're going into retail. Of course, yeah. And also helps you when you're actually on shelf and you're trying to, you know, maintain certain velocities and it potentially expand into new doors. So we're really focused on online right now and really building the brand from there. And it's it's been really I mean, the response has been great. We're still working through, we're not even a year old. We're still working on improvements of messaging and educating consumers and really figuring out various niches of, you know, demographics of types of people that we can reach. And And you're out raising at the moment? We're not raising right now. Okay. Nope. We are fully funded at the moment, but, you know, you never know. In terms of just like closing the loop on the Venture Studio, what have you learned or what has that informed during your time at BioMe as it relates to some of the other products that you guys are working on? Like there's so many different routes to take on entrepreneurship, right? Like this is clearly one of them. This is a little bit, I would say more specialized. You sort of have your stable of great people already. I think think the best thing that's come out of this, I don't know if it's necessarily something that I've learned, but I think that the, the most positive attribute of doing this in a venture studio surrounded by people you've worked with for many, many years is that it is far less lonely than probably the route that most entrepreneurs take, which is a lot of sitting, you know, at your desk (laughs) in a room by yourself, trying to like, well, wondering, overthought. I I mean, I still have those days because I am the only person besides, you know, a a recent hire in the, the content creation space that works on this brand day to day. And it can feel quite lonely. You know, you're like in a brainstorm with yourself all the time. But I think having those resources and those other individuals to to connect with on a daily basis does make that feel far less lonely. So it just feels a little healthier, maybe a little bit more productive where you don't get stuck as quickly, maybe. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I think it affords you the opportunity to grow a lot faster. I'm sure where a lot of other entrepreneurs are kind of stumbling around trying to figure out how to do, make X, Y, and Z work, you know, I have 
someone I can reach out to and be like, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? You know, you can kind of move a little bit quicker. I don't know. It's been, I, this is a totally new experience for me. So totally, I'm learning yeah. all the time. What's, really what's next on. for Biomi? What can you tell us about what's on deck for 2024? So we just launched a new product called Gut Remedy, which is a, it's a cleanse, but it's really more of a detox for heavy metals and toxins and pathogens, which I have always kind of felt is like in this portfolio of products was like the missing piece because a lot of us travel a lot. A lot of us, you know, even as much as we want to be really strict on our routines, we fall off of them or, you know, something gets in the way. Specifically as an entrepreneur, I'm traveling constantly and I wanted to be able to allow people to go out and enjoy, you know, weddings and, you know, travel and not feel so strict about X, Y, and Z, allow them to do those things and come back and really be able to kind of create a clean slate in their body to help rebuild that repertoire on top of. How does it do it? So it is made with, I would say the hero ingredient in it is called IgG or immunoglobulins. It's very new in kind of this world of gut health. It's essentially, it's a binder that binds to heavy metals and toxins. And unlike, I would say other binding ingredients, it actually there's clinical research and backing that shows that it can pull out bad bacteria. It's not like one of those things that it can't distinguish between good bacteria and bad bacteria. It actually can. So it's binding to it to essentially make that bacteria too large to be absorbed through your intestines or your gut lining. And then the other ingredients within essentially kind of bulk up like the bound bad bacteria and help to eliminate it. So you're kind of like that's fascinating. getting rid wow. of all of it. Yeah. All right. How do you that's think wonderful. the story ends? So how long do you think you're at BioMe? What's, what is the exit oh my gosh, look like? Forever. No. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I don't know what's going to happen. It's, Neither it feels like every single <laughs> day is different and something new happens. And I mean, who knows? I could be at this brand forever, but I've just enjoyed so much building it. And the fact that we are where we are in less than a year is pretty wild. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see. I, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I will be sticking it out because this is feels it's literally a child to me. So I love it. Well, tell people <laughs> where they can find the brand, where they can find you. So we are on Amazon, of course, and then we are at bio.me, which is our website. It's also the name of the brand, Smart Smart. And we're <laughs> on Instagram and TikTok at bio.me. Shannon, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.